Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, once more, we are gonna try to bring to you educational and inspiring content to help you learn how to draw better, right? And and enjoy the, uh, the act of drawing, right? Uh, just because of meetings I had this morning, what's something that just wanted to roll off my tongue there was, you know, drawing is a skill similar to learning the piano and that you shouldn't be rushing yourself either. Like it takes time. It's gonna take time to learn all this stuff. There's so many facets to, uh, to drawing. And today we're gonna talk about, you know, dun dun dun, like the, the semi-evil word in my space of measuring, but how to do that in a way that you're not measuring. Like, I, I guess the one thing I'm not a big fan of, of all the different tactics of measuring, right, let me get to Photoshop here. Um, I'm not a big fan of, the the pencil in the hand you know it's like here i am and i'm standing there like this and you know i'm holding i'm holding a pencil with my with my thumb and i'm measuring from here to here basically and like looking at the model and seeing you know here here's a model right so models here i don't know what i'm drawing here I'm like uh, are they up on one foot now <laughs> right the models here uh, what does this measurement get me, right? Because of me looking over here, this gets spread out, right? It gets bigger. And it's like, oh, this measurement should be this height of the model. So when I go to my piece of paper, now I know that this measurement is this tall, right? And it occupies this part of the model. It works, not like it doesn't work. Um, the one thing if you ever do this that you don't want to do or get caught doing <laughs> is, um, is bending your elbow, right? You, you break, obviously, the whole system if you bend your elbow because the idea is that you have a locked arm and that's your consistency towards measuring, right? Now, why don't I like this? I just don't like it because, man, it puts so much focus on the measuring. And, you know, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't measure or Swenley and Ratunjay don't measure. Of course we measure. we measure. We're measuring all the time, like on an autopilot of just making sure things land in the right place, right? That's really measuring, right? Things are landing in the right place on the page or on the screen compared to looking at a photo reference, right? And how do you do that? And what are some faster ways of doing that instead of pulling out the hand with the tool, you know, and measuring and then trying to move that over to the piece of paper, right? So before we get into all this, um, let's say hello to, uh, to Swenley. How are you doing today? Ah, uh, good. Looking forward to uh, developing some observation skills. Yes, that's exactly right. Observation today, very good, yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. Today is, you know, we have the eyeball brain in hand and to riff off of Swenley's point, we're pushing in the eyeball today, right? Doesn't mean you have to have great hand control. This is about, can you see well enough and how are we teaching you to see? You know? But Tinji will be with us. He's had a little bit of tech, technical difficulty but, and he's last uh, today in our lineup. So hopefully uh, we'll see him coming in in a little bit. Um, yeah, so let's let's do exactly what Mr. Swinley here was talking about, right? We want to learn our observation skills, right? We want to learn how to see better, you know, and how to do so. So what we're going to do today is um, one of these images, this one, um, we are going to share across the three uh, instructors. And I brought in a couple of other ones that the skills I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to show on a couple of other images, okay? So let's talk about the first skill. Right, let's just get to it. <clears throat> uh, number one, right? Number one is what I call the bounding box. If you end up really enjoying any of these, by the way, there's a great deal of this in the force character design book. The bounding box is one of the biggest tools there because Besides the bounding box showing you accuracy and something like proportion and therefore measuring, once you have that, it's a great tool to play with that, right? And because it's so abstract, it, it's just such a great, like I said, such a great tool, such a great mechanism for you to manipulate, okay? So the bounding box, what does the bounding box mean? It's literally a box, right? Except it bounds, right? It's, it's us like entrapping the model, right? And you wanna be aware, like I'm aware when I look at a model, I just have a gen, you know, this is very general. I have a general sense, I was gonna say, right? This is very general. Because believe it or not, I have to say, uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty challenging to get a bounding box accurate at your first pass 
on a piece of paper without doing it, let's say on top of a photograph. So what is the bounding box? The bounding box is I'm hitting key moments in a pose. Uh, when I say moments, I mean like the furthest left, right, top and bottom uh, coordinates of a pose. And what will that give me? That'll give me something that looks like this, right? So the model's head like might be here. So that made me put a line, the top highest line is there. Could be the model's hand, right? Maybe the model's hand is here and then like goes down and their face is here, right? But whatever is furthest north, right? Whatever coordinate is furthest north defines where that top horizontal line is, right? It's like, well, I have this one that's furthest west or to the left. Well, maybe the model, um, you know, going off that silly uh, pose I did before, right? Maybe their leg is up and here's their knee and then they come down and their foot touches here, All right? Okay, well, that causes this line to land right here. And then at the bottom is typically um, the other foot, right? Like how the model is standing, All right? It's like here. Oh, God. I'm very sick, by the way, so bear with me. <laughs> I can't even draw an outside, inside, outside leg. Uh, all right, so this goes to this and to this. So there it is, right, like that. And then maybe the other hand is like over here, right? It's like, oh, here's their hand. So you'll notice that defines the furthest edges. What are we getting out of this? Well, to state the obvious, we're getting width, right? It's like a first measurement. We get a sense of the width of the pose by the height of the pose, right? So going this way, H-E-I-G-H-T. You guys still do that? I know the certain words I like spell in my head <laughs> to make sure I get them right. Like rhythm, ironically, of all words, right? It's like, oh, how do you spell that? R-H-Y-T-H-M. I can't spell the word. I have to spell it in my head to actually get it right, even though I've written it probably like 10,000 times. Um, so height, we get width by height. So that's awesome, right? One of the first things I could tell when a student comes in with homework and I see the reference and I look at their drawing, I could just see right away, does the bounding box look right? Is there, are they in the general ballpark of the uh, proportions, right? Just the general proportions. And if they're not, where did things go wrong, right? Where did they go wrong? So for instance, you know, if I came in with this pose and that's the bounding box, if you came in with a bounding box that looked like this, we already know something's wrong, right? It's that fast, it's that immediate, that dramatic, right? That we have this, um, this abstraction, right? The abstraction of the shape to recognize this um, pose is not bound correctly, you see. Any questions on this so far? Uh, remember to drink thorough flu. <laughs> uh, let's see, no, no, yes, distorted. Okay, so this is a great, is a great quick filter, right? What if what if the model looked like this, like drawing number one, and you came in with something that looked like this, right? We know it's wrong. It's like, why is the model reclined when they're standing up and you shrunk them down like that? Now that's an over-exaggeration that usually doesn't happen. But this kind of thing could happen, you know, where it's like this, or maybe a student comes in with, um, you know, with an image that looks like this, you see? So you can tell, the proportion, that's what matters here. It's the proportion of what is the width versus what is the height. And how do those two relate to one another? There's like nothing wrong with this box. It's a bounding box, but it's too short in its width compared to this height. It's just not the pose, right? This one is too square, right? They're becoming equal. They're very close to being a square and we know the pose is not a square, right? So again, really fast, really fast, simple way of doing it. Now, as I said before, as simple and fast as this is, it's kind of challenging, you know, challenging to do because, um, you know, because it's so vague, right? It's so, it's so vague, right? So I usually will say to students, you know, do this on the, on the photo, on the photo first, right? Like here's the elbow, right? So we know that we're at least that high. Here's the wrist. It's the furthest thing to the left, right? Here's the toe. It's the bottom. Here's this wrist, it's the furthest thing to the right, all right? And there is, right? There's the bounding box for this pose. I've got an overarching sense of how much two-dimensional acreage, like a farm, two-dimensional acreage or space this drawing has to occupy, okay? 
So let's do that for a couple of these. I brought in specifically ones that are very uh, different from one another, right? So we have this one. Let's take a look at this one, right? Wow, very different, right? Extremely different bounding box. Oops, this toe is lower, so right, I, I change that. This one comes below that one. This one does determine the furthest left we're gonna go. The top of his head is about right there, all right? And the, what's the furthest right? Mm, probably that's this moment in his foot. So it really helps me even just be aware of that, right? In a pose like this, I could see a student push the shoulder past this line. I could see them pushing the knee past this line, right? So many opportunities to go wrong. Right, but now I have this straight line there, and that helps me know, oh, the furthest thing to the right is the edge of his foot. So when I'm drawing the pose, I wanna make sure that everything else is gonna be nudged in, All right? So let's see, let's shrink this down just so I can put it over here. So there's the bounding box for that pose, All right? Let's do one more. Now we have this one. Let's get a new layer here. So bottom, yeah, somewhere around here on his foot. Right, furthest left, uh, the edge of his back, right, right there. Very important moment again. I could, you know, the apex of this, which were, this kind of leads me up to the next conversation, is like where on the edges of the bounding box do these moments actually connect, right? So let's get this one done and then let's start talking about that next step, All right? So here's the bounding box. Not too different than the prior pose, right? Interesting. Interesting that. Um, two different poses, extremely different poses, right? Let's put this here together with this. Two extremely different poses could have, uh, you know, bounding boxes that maybe are not too far away from each other, right? Look at that. Look at that pose. I'm kind of surprised by this one. When I do this, I don't know about you, but if someone showed me that bounding box in this, I'd be like, hmm, might be wrong. I would imagine this should be longer, right? That it should be longer but it's not, right? You know, longer left and right or the width of it, but it's not, why isn't it? Well, cause the, the width between the feet is about the width of going from the foot to the top of the head. It's almost square. And yet this pose was well, so different, right? And this one I could see as a square cause he's closed in and everything. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes total sense to me. The other one would definitely fool me. You know, I'd be thinking that this one should look something like, uh, you know, I would imagine this one is something like this, like just looking off like that, right? I'd be like, yeah, it's probably longer than it is high, but it's not, right? So another reason why it's so important. Now, I would recommend this. When you get better at this, you know, of course, what you want to try and do is do this without doing it on the photograph, but it's fine. You know, starting on the photo is totally fine. It gives you the box, right? It's a great way of then starting to draw force in here and caging the model a little bit, right? I'd say one of the biggest critiques of force drawing that I've been hearing for 25 years is I can't control the proportion, right? Sure, of course not, right? It's really tough because first of all, I want you to be energetic and with that energy, you're less um, restrained, right? Less controlled. Um, but also um, all you've got are these single lines, right? Lines to show these rhythms. So there's like there's not enough information to like grab onto. It's really hard to grab onto very much that's gonna help you. So this is a great way of starting the real stuff in. So that's number one, right? Number one is the bounding box. So to finish my segment, number two, number two is like, a, I would call like grid light. I'm gonna spell it L-I-T-E, grid light, right? There's a sense of a grid, but a really light grid. You know, grid heavy would be, I actually grid this whole thing out, right? And, you know, there's lots of schools that do this. And I think it's a great way of learning how to copy, right? And see, which is fine, um, but creating those grids, right? But instead, what we want to do is say, the main thing we want to be aware of are where are the touch points, right? That's really what I want to get out of this, right? So let's go back in here. I'm going to move this over him again, right? So I'm looking at the elbow, the hand down to the but it's about right there. So what matters really to me is this, this axis right there. I wanna know where that is, all right? I wanna know where that is, and I wanna know where that is, all right? So that, that gives me a lot of information, you see? It's one level deeper on clarity of what's happening, and it gives me points to really hit. So like when I did, I just did this with the elbow and the wrist, 
what was interesting to me was, wow, it's pretty vertical, right? To get from here to here, my first response would be, I'm going to put down a, a, a stronger angle, you know, a stronger angle, but angle's really not that strong, you know, pretty weak to get from the elbow, you know, to the wrist and then, you know, and then get out to the hand, right? But, you know, I could start, I could start working with this, right? If I have these points, um, I'm really starting to get a, to a place that's got quite a bit of information, right? And Swenley and Mutunjay today are going to even give you more, but just to get this thing going, right? It's like, well, I just want to rough out in here and see if I can kind of hit some of these, um, you know, hit some of these landmarks. Like I know I've got to hit there. You know, I've got this leg that's coming down. It's going to be over here and I'm being super rough right now, right? I want that. He's going to come out and down and his toe is going to hit there. Right, here's his head. Having the box, by the way, you can see, I'm like, mm, where is the edge of that box, right? Well, where is his head going to land, right? So I'm being very loose and sloppy here, but that's good. You know, I don't want to get too uptight yet, right? I just want to see if I can kind of land this stuff in the right, you know, in the right place, right? It's like, oh, does this, does this feel good or not? Interesting how his wrist is the furthest thing out here. And then, you know, then we're going to have his hand break back, right? And what happens here? I'm like, oh, the the hand and that leg then start really working together. I can kind of jump over there and see what that looks like, right? Oh, this has to come down here. His foot's pretty big. So I have to really give his foot like the room to get down to that moment, you see? So I'm just snugging things up here a little bit, right? Just to give you a better image, All right? So at least now I'm in the box, right? I'm in the box and I have some key moments to hit, right? I got some real key moments to hit. And that controls, that at least gives us some control over, um, over force, right? Well, a lot of foreshortening here, right? In fact, I probably want to shorten this up like so, right? A lot of foreshortening going on, you know, like this, the tube is, is extremed, right? So anyway, before, like I said, I close out, this kind of gives me the beginnings of like a loose grid. You know, a loose grid would look something like this. If I pull these lines all the way across the bounding box, I get this kind of grid. It's asymmetrical, right? It's not like a perfect grid. It's not like, you know, an inch to an inch or anything like that, right? What it's doing is giving me this bigger abstraction. And these horizontals and verticals I put in actually are pretty important, right? Because if I know the wrist is there and I go across that whole box, I can see, you know, like, where is this? You can see I'm off here, right? It's like, well, if the wrist is over there, the knee feels pretty good. It's about here, right? But if I take the wrist and I go across, it's like, yeah, man, that his his upper body is so small that I have to get his crotch over, you know, I have to get his crotch over his wrist, right? You see? So it really helps you like start to nail, you know, start to nail stuff down, right? Any questions before I hand this off? Uh, oh, you know what I should do before we do this is I did it on this image. Let's do it on the one that Swenley and Mutunjay will take on as well. So they're going to take this guy on. All right. So let's take a look at this guy. I'll take this box again. Let's scale it up. All right. Let's get it to the right, uh, the right size. A little bit more there. All right, so everything is like clicking in right there. Okay, so where are the touch points on this one? His head, all right, his foot, almost pretty much like in the corner there, right? So that's good to know. This one controls this corner, all right? So that's great. Uh, and that's it, right? So we have that corner. Corners, because these are in the corners, they really almost define two edges instead of one, right? And then if I were to pull this across the whole thing, right, I would have this and then down here, I guess I'd put an edge for the foot like that, all right? So some really basic, again, basic measuring. Let's bring this over here. Maybe instead here, what I'll do is make the reference smaller. All right, so I got all these notes now for myself and I know his head is here. I'm going to be super rough and loose, right? I know I don't want to push his shoulder out there, right? No good, right? I know that I have to watch this edge, right? Like very closely, right? 
I've got his leg here and I've got to make my way down on this angle, right? This is pretty horizontal. So by the way, notice I just said this is pretty horizontal. The bounding box, what it also does is gives you that as a guide, right? What I did is I created a vertical, I created a horizontal. So it gives me something to compare to, right? Because the box is there, I can go, oh yeah, his leg's pretty horizontal. So I have to match that to that. Now, the irony of this is you always have these vertical and horizontal edges because if you're drawing on a piece of paper, you have them and you have them when you're working in Photoshop or any other digital you know, platform. But uh, we oddly don't pay attention to it, you know? So the bounding box is giving that to you. It's like, oh, that leg is pretty horizontal. I don't wanna angle it down. You know, I don't wanna angle it up, right? It's horizontal, right? It's getting me out to the knee. And then I gotta watch this angle as well. It's pretty, pretty steep. So you see, I'm pushing it. I'm like trying to push it down and connect these two, right? We've got his knee, which is sitting like, I could see with his foot landing here, his knee is, about here, right? It's gonna be close to that vertical edge. You know, I wanna get that leg down like this. I wanna get that foot planted in there, right? It's gonna occupy this corner as you can see, right? So again, I'm drawing forcefully, by the way. It's not like I wanna lose force for the sake of the bounding box, but the bounding box gives me some control, right? It just gives me control, right? I got this over here. I can see like how close or not I am to the edge. And you know, I've got his arm coming out. Again, vertical and horizontal. I can look at his hand and his fingers in the picture and go, well, where are his fingers at? Eh, I gotta be just shy of the knee, right? So there's like a line about right there, right? And it's kind of horizontal. It comes down towards me at this angle and then it's gonna sweep up ever so slightly and then hit his hand like this, right? So here's like the shape of his arm, for instance, right? So now at least the forces are more in control, right? God forbid we want them out of control, <laughs> All right? So you got a more in control, I'm in the box. Um, I've got key points that I'm trying to hit. I could put other lines in here, you know, to grid out, to find how things respond to one another, but it's a very fast, very fast, uh, very drawing driven way of seeing the big picture. Right. And in fact, what we're doing today is we're really going through measurement, measuring through a hierarchical approach. Right. So again, it's hierarchy. Hierarchy. It's a lot harder on the figure to, let's say, start with his chin and go, let me measure this out, get his chin to his neck, to there, to the shoulder, and like try to do this and go in like really small. Right. And then try to build out from there. It's not a very forced drawing approach. You know, what we're always teaching is you wanna go from big to medium to small. So this is rough, you know, like this is a rough way of, um, of working, okay? All right, any questions on this between, besides the whole like Twinder hot best dating uh, thing? <laughs> Let's kick out whoever this is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, I guess, uh, Swanley, I'm gonna hand it off to you. You ready? Yes. Oh, I have to give you control, hold on. Uh, Co-host, there you go. Uh, let's see. There were a couple of questions, by the way, in the chat. I don't know if you okay. saw them. Uh, let me quickly set up over here. Okay. All right, so yeah, thank you, Mike, for, for the intro. Mm -hmm. So Mike spoke about the bounding box, again, working from big to small. And what I'm going to do with you guys is show you how you go from the bounding box, like the overall like big picture to something a bit smaller. And some of you probably are familiar with them with this uh, method, the term is uh, an envelope. And with the envelope, what you want to do is, what Mike also started doing, you want to look for the extremities of the pose and create like, uh, like a containing uh, shape for the figure, you know, so a bit smaller in the bounding box. And the extremities are simply the furthest points or limits of, of the figure or the pose in this case like Mike showed you earlier. So let's start with, let's start with this guy. 
So I have the bounding box here. And for the extremities of the pose, uh, again, like Mike showed you, we want to uh, look at where, where does the body touch the bounding box? So these would be like two points, for example. And this would be like another point down here at the foot. Here, the big toe is touching. I make this a bit bigger so you guys can see them. So we have this, and it's also touching here. So now we have these points. And next, we can connect these points. And when we connect these points, these dots, we start uh, getting angles. You know, like these two dots, if I connect them, this is a horizontal uh, angle, of course. And actually, let's see. Yeah, I want to keep getting this point, but if we just adhere to the extremities here, we would go from, let me rotate the canvas, it's easy to, to hit that angle. So we want to go from here to here. No, so we have that angle. And what happens is when we start connecting those dots and creating the angles, we start getting positive and negative shape. Now, positive shape is the shape of the object that you're drawing, in this case, the figure. And the negative shape is the shape that is around the object. So actually, in this case, let me do it with this color so you can see it. So with the first angle we created, we have this, this negative shape, which, which is actually a, uh, a triangle. Uh, let's see, let me reduce the opacity just a little bit. I think, uh, oops, Not that one. I think this will be a bit clear. Yeah, that's better. So this triangle here that is being formed, now this is then our our negative shape so let's continue oops went back too far let's go back so we can connect this angle down here pretty easy and simple then we go from this angle to uh from one toe to the other one actually And last but not least, we go from the top of the head to that toe. Now, so now we start with a bounding box and we're cutting out a smaller shape for the pose. And again, we have the, uh, the positive shape and we have the negative shape on the outside of that. I want to tone this in. I think that will make it even clearer. So let's grab this. So we have this triangle. This is a negative shape. And we have this. So that's the negative shape, and then you have the positive shape, which is like the big shape that envelopes the figure as a whole. And the next step after that would be to start carving into that envelope even more, you know, meaning that I can say, well, I'm going to I'm going to carve this in, for example, and cut out this negative shape. Now, and I could go outside and start including some of the parts that got left out. Also, in a sense, I always like to think about this like uh, almost like a puzzle. You now we have these puzzle pieces, these shapes that fit into each other. See, we can cut out the head back here. And actually, we'd have to 
carve back out and get the portion of the uh, of the back and shoulder that we left out. Okay, so this looks good. So now you could use this. I mean, if you did, did this as an overlay on top of the photo, you can use this as, as a guide or help uh, to help you draw uh, or check the proportions as you're drawing the figure. So actually, now that we have that, let's try and do that here. Uh, let's see, let's grab this guy and move him over here. And I will duplicate that bounding box, bring it out here. Let's go to a new layer. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, with the extremities. Now in the bounding box is going to be my first reference point, like starting from the corners, like for example, I want these extremities, so I need to go, it's easy for me to go from here and say, well, how far from that corner is this point, you know, and how far is this one, for example. You know, and then I have this first angle. And this one is a bit easier, it's pretty much like right at the corner. You know, and like the big toe is, so now I look at the angle between this extremity and this one. And then I can look at the corner of the bounding box again. How much do I have to go up? Relatively small distance. So here's the where the uh, the toes touch the bounding box on this side. And for this post, as we saw before, this is pretty much it. You know, so from here, all we have to do is just connect these uh, these dots that we placed on the bounding box with angles. And that gives us like the big envelope for uh, for this pose. Okay, we have this guy and we have this one. Okay, so we have our big shape. And from here, we could go and do what we did before, which is uh, start to uh, like carve out the negative shapes. And it's just going to be like an average, of course. Now I can go from here to here and how far out. So I'm looking now at the distance from here to the, uh, the tip of the finger, for example, like how far out is that? Of course, doing it on top of the photo is easier because, you know, you're just placing it there on the photo, but when you actually have to observe it, it's, uh, it might take a couple of iterations to get like a good, a good approximation of those proportions. So now I'm looking at like this puzzle piece right here in between the bottom of his lower arm and the top of the thigh. Now I'm just uh, looking at very simple angles, but I'm looking at, at this shape. You now, and how big is this shape? You now, and this is something that I look for a lot when, uh, when drawing, you know, positive and negative shapes. Okay, we have this, then we have the foot down here. And this goes up. Let's see, we have the other foot. And this goes up again. Now, so even here, again, I'm looking at these distance. 
Now, so even if you have like two, two points, you can start like estimating the distance from, from A to B and then checking in your drawing if, if it's matching approximately. So this is coming close. See, so from here of the back of his head, the, uh, the shoulder blade area sticking out back here. Then this going in. Then it's kind of like visually merging with his lower leg, actually his lower leg. It's more around here. So again, I'm looking at I'm looking at this puzzle piece here right now and see if I'm getting close to that in my uh, in my carving out of this simple shape. Now, so again, we have the positive shape, which is the shape of the figure, and then we have the negative, which are the puzzle pieces around the figure. And now the next step in this would be, you, know, you could use this just like Mike showed as like a, like a guide to do the force drawing. You know, so now you have you have set some uh, some boundaries that you can work in. Now with practice, this will help you to uh, see clearer and clearer. Especially when things are very foreshortened, your minds will want to play tr tricks on you and make you draw everything as if, if it wasn't foreshortened. So the bounding box and the envelopes and positive and negative shape can really help you to uh, overcome those illusions and see what's really going on there in terms of proportions. You know, to, to Swanley's point, uh, the metaphor of a puzzle is really great to think about right now. It's like we have a puzzle and it's got these proportions. Here's the bounding box of the puzzle. And we're breaking down those edges by starting to fill the middle. Like, I don't know about you, but when I do a puzzle, that's what I do, right? I, I first put the puzzle together around the frame. And then I start working my way off of that, right? To, to break mm -hmm. it up inside with smaller, smaller pieces. So really the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. See, so this came out pretty well. Now I can see, and again, visually it looks as if this leg is much longer, but the best way to check that is by looking at this, this negative shape, for example, this puzzle piece, and compare it to, switch the colors here, compare it to what I have here. So the first thing I see is this angle. If I compare it to the vertical, of the bounding box, notice that my angle isn't really matching. Like in the reference, it's a bit more like this. No, so I know that that has to be changed. And let's see, before we do that, let me just get the whole thing here. It helps just get the big, all like the whole figure down and then make the changes. See, the other hand is back here. We barely see it. And now I'm checking, where do I have to place this edge? And I'm comparing it to, to this side. Like, what's the distance here? And it seems like in my drawing, this might be too far, I think. This is a bit narrower. Now, which also changes the location of the pelvis. Now, so this becomes narrower. The edge of the pelvis is more here. This gives you a bit more, a bit more room to get the right length for the thigh. Now, in accuracy, it's really a matter of time. 
you know, spending time observing and, and correcting. I mean, there's no way around that. You know, if you go fast, you're going to sacrifice some accuracy. You really need to take your time and observe and correct until the uh, proportions are uh, to your liking, you know, relative to the reference. Uh, let's see, I have a couple of minutes left. Let's just do one more. Are there any questions in the chat? Yeah, some questions, but I've been I've been keeping up with them. Okay, cool. So actually, let's do this one. And let me move it over here. So with this one, I'm going to jump right to uh, well. Let's let's start with with the envelope without the bounding box in this case. So again, I'm looking for I'm looking for points. You know, I'm looking for points, and then I can connect those points, and that gives me angles. Like here, I can go from here to here, for example. Now, so I'm going to start here. If you look at this point, and what's the angle that we have here, and what's the angle and the distance that we have here. Now, even here, I'm using the force line in the sense that I'm drawing from point A to point B. And actually, the force line itself has proportion in it because it's the idea of energy moving from point A to point B. And that energy moves over a distance. You know, so I'm estimating the like how long do I have to travel from here to reach my destination here. And the same between here and here so i'm looking at the angle and i'm estimating the distance and then from here we go out to the, the tip of the finger now i can also double check the angle between this point and this one, for example, you know, to help me see if if I'm on the right track. So this looks good. This one looks as if it needs to be like more out here. Now I can use even this as like my basis to start drawing the figure. Now, so in between here and here is the torso. So I can start and start drawing the torso here. You know, in the same manner, I'm looking at, at this shape. You now, how wide is the shape of, of a rib cage in this case? So it's cool that you cut across from her, you know, like her shoulder out to her foot right like mm -hmm. suddenly like segmenting you know the puzzle in new abstract ways to just land things right you know so you, you're starting to get into this place of um creative comparison you know like comparing these like vector points right to mm. to analyze the two-dimensionality what i've been saying in the chat quite a bit is uh that puzzle idea you know this is really about visualizing and understanding the two dimensionality of a three dimensional image and that we're really breaking things down into these points and shapes. And it is very much like a puzzle. It's probably the best um, metaphor I think we can use, you know, so you're trying to get this puzzle put together and yet you're drawing a three dimensional human being, right? But you want to always be aware of the two dimensionality. Like remember, no matter what you do, it's still an illusion because it's 2D. You know, this photograph is 2D, the drawings are 2D, right? So you can use that, you know, use that to your benefit, to your power, that it is only two dimensional. So how do I see this two dimensionally instead of getting caught up in all the perspective and the lighting and the anatomy, right? Like just see the two dimensionality, this simplest, you know, simplistic bounding box, points and angles, shapes, right? If you can kind of do that, then I think your accuracy in measuring will increase like tenfold, you know. 
when you draw a model from life, you know, in like a classroom, it's actually much harder, right? Here with these photographs, when we're doing stuff online, it's easier because you're looking at a two-dimensional image and then you're converting it to a two-dimensional image. When you have a, a real person standing in front of you and you have all this three-dimensional space and then you're converting it to this two-dimensional puzzle, it's trickier, harder to make that adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. You know, so I would say make good use of, of the digital tools and doing the overlays that helps you see, you know, and once you get your mind trained with that, then you try to draw it from scratch. And then, like Mike said, from live drawing, I say that is like the like the ultimate test. That's the, the most difficult one. Okay, I'm going to stop here and pass it over to Mitunje. Hello, Mitunje. Um, yep. <laughs> How are you? We didn't get to say hello before. Yep. Uh, my pen actually just took its blood breath, you know, so rip to this guy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Time to bury the pen. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it just took all my beatings, you know, all these years. So, <laughs> exactly. I finally beat it up too much, too much horse <laughs> mileage. <laughs> All right, uh, all right, guys. So finally, uh, here, you know, hello everyone. Um, so and thank you, Mike and Sunli, for the awesome insights. Now, the thing is, uh, we have have these like puzzle shapes and everything, like proportions figured out. Uh, we'll elevate these ideas using uh, some concepts here, okay? And the few concepts, you know, that I'm going to um, and sorry, you know, I have not been able to like uh, do a full blown PSD for you guys. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, like an emergency right now. So anyway, uh, what I actually will talk about is um, the size, okay? Well, size or the scale, right? So I'm just gonna write it here really quickly. So, right, are we gonna be, I'm gonna be talking about the size or the scale, right? Uh, the depth actually, right? And the overlaps, okay? So these are the, the few topics that we'll be using and finally like putting that all together, okay? So the proportion, the bounding box thing, like cutting with the positive and negative spaces. And what you're gonna do is you basically uh, just bring those like bounding box ideas or those puzzle ideas to like uh, really small, uh, small things here, okay? So let's have a look at the, the same photograph. And see here, I grab up the screenshot. <laughs> so what, um, so here's the photograph, you know, so what is the scale of the size, okay? so. We're gonna be compare. Uh, we're gonna be injecting like those ideas into like, uh, for example, hands here. Okay. Now I know this is. Um, we cannot see the other hand here. We see a little bit of thumb right there. You see. Uh, I'm gonna be doing it through red here. Okay. See right there. So maybe you know for the sake of clarity, what I'm just doing is putting it right here. Okay. So I'll be like, oh, you know, right there. This will be um, our guideline. Okay. For the for the sake of clarity. And bring it right here and here's a little hand so what i'm doing is i am putting that bounding box okay around this hand okay and i'm saying look at the hand which is coming out towards us versus look at the bounding box or the size of the hand that's back in there okay so now we are really taking that bounding box the whole bounding box thing okay so this one right here uh i think this one was the wrong one i think this is like much more of a uh yeah, and now because we are also extending the hand out, so this bounding box will be a little bit more wider as well, okay? So it's something like this, kind of like that. So not right now we took that bounding box, just gonna be closing that for now. Yeah, so we took that bounding box right here, just like extended out because uh, that extends out just because of the hand. And now uh, we are keeping those bounding boxes to like, oh, look at that hand in there. Look at the hand in here, okay? Not much to play on the scale here again, um, but I'm just like trying to like put that in, okay? So this is usually um, the scale, okay? The scale of you're comparing the two um, same objects, okay? For example, the two feet or the two hands. Now, for example, um, again, we're gonna be exaggerating this image a little bit. For example, look at this feet here, okay? This is much more forward, okay? If you see, look at this one right here, it's a little bit off the diagonal. It's not like, super straight, super straight would be something like this. So 
we uh, i'm just assuming that this feed right here you know it's like a little bit smaller in size okay because it's a little bit far away a little bit you know not too much but again if you try to like exaggerate that uh, exaggerate that idea you know so the feet like this feet right here that would be coming forward okay and then this feet right here would be going a little bit back you know? so again we have like a scale difference right here um now you can compare it with like different uh, different uh, would you say like elements okay but uh, what does the whole concept depends upon it basically depends upon you know one object and the same object but it's like two different uh, sizes okay until you're living off a planet where let's say your one has uh, one hand is already bigger okay <laughs> so you know it might be might be something like oops might be uh, there might be an alien okay it's like this you know everything's right but his one hand is like way too big and on the other hand is like way too small again, okay? okay? <laughs> so if you're that alien, well, this not, illusion is not gonna work for you. But if you're just a normal human, you're just like, uh, just like us, you know, <laughs> or you have like the same size for both the hands and both the feet, okay? Uh, you have that comparison, okay? So if you're making one hand really big and if you're one, making one hand like, let's say really small and same goes with the feet and, you know, like the legs or the arms, whatever it is, you just need like two units of the same uh, measurement, okay? And if one is big, one is small, you're creating the depth okay, into the image. So uh, this is how you create, uh, how you take the bounding box, like put that into those elements and try to um, have the unit of scale, okay? All right, um, so I, I can just like draw this image really quickly for you, for you guys right here. And we'll see like how we can push those, push those scale. And uh, finally, it will like create the depth. So, uh, let's say canvas. I just need that reference right here. Okay, there we go. So I'll just put that in. Hmm. So I, I'll just try to like push that uh, push that image according to the ideas that I've discussed. Okay. All right. Um. So we're trying to push it. Let's see. So I'm just like taking this, uh, taking the shoulder again. You can take that bounding box where, wherever you need. Okay. So what I'm also doing here in this case, I'm saying, oh, look at this shoulder right here. So it is this big. Look at the pelvis here. That's actually this big. Okay. So again, like uh, basically the torso and the rib cage and the pelvis, we have like two parts and just like creating, trying to create the scale in there as well. Okay. So let's go. So I'm I'm making this like really really small. I'm just like bringing this forward. Okay. So taking the bounding box and exaggerating to the ideas. Now um, let's try to do this. So I'm really just pushing out this knee forward. Okay. It's almost like taking the same image and uh, actually capturing that with a ten millimeter lens. Okay. As <laughs> so it gives you like this really wide field of view where. Uh, things are like getting super exaggerated. I've been playing off with the cameras these days a lot. So, you know, I I am able to tell you technically like what, uh, what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is coming forward. Okay. So you see that knee in here? Again, I, I'm using the the idea of the bounding box. Okay. So it's in my mind. I'm saying, oh, there, there's like a, like a bounding box like here. Okay. Uh, all right, now we get this. We get this pelvis right here. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna be making it really a little small here. And uh, I just want to push this feet right here and this other leg right here a little bit farther back. Okay. And then pushing it back, that will not be as practical. But then now this feet would be like really big. I can do this, let's say. Here I'm using the line weight to, uh, just like Sunli mentioned, you know, we are still using the force line as a kind of a, uh, like the support for all of these concepts, okay? So here I'm pushing the line weight in order to show, show the depth here. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be chaining the size here <laughs> quite a lot. All right, let's make this feet really, really big. Okay, so the inside ankle is higher, okay, like this. Kind of like that. And uh, let's 
I'm just gonna make it this one like really, really normal. So anyway, I'm just like putting the really quick gesture here. Uh, I am aware, aware of the bounding box, okay? So <laughs> what I'm doing is, um, now to exaggerate what I'm actually doing, I'm taking this image uh, right here. I'm taking this bounding box right here, okay? For example, the bounding box is like this, okay? And now it actually shows me, uh, like, is it height-wise bigger or is it like width-wise bigger, okay? So there will be, uh, you know, one of the two ways that it gives me, okay? It will give me a falling bounding box like this, which is like width-wise, it's kind of larger or is like the height-wise, it's more, okay? So let's say a bounding box more like this is like height-wise getting more and more. So it gives me an idea like where to exaggerate that picture. Now, the thing is, uh, once we put the hand right here, the bounding box is width-wise, it's getting like more and more larger. So what I can do is when I want to exaggerate those ideas, I can play off of this with the bounding boxes, but <clears throat> within the overall image, and within the within those parts again as well. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that bounding box, which is width wise, it's kind of larger and like take giving it like even um, I'm taking it like more larger. Okay. So you see like how big the bounding box is becoming here. Okay. It's actually becoming more like um more like this. Mm, just taking this, just taking this, taking this, taking this. See? It's like becoming more and more larger, okay, in a sense, like that. Um, we got the black again. Hmm. So I'm just gonna putting this, uh, just like I mentioned, I'm just gonna putting this for the sake of clarity. This like really really small hand, and then this this hand is just getting more and more bigger again. You see? Look at the size of the elbow. It's getting more bigger, and then for this particular hand. I'm just going to be making it a little bit larger. Keeping things in control though, you know, so for example, um, you see like how the fingers are aligning with almost like at the back of the knee, just almost at the back of the knee. So I'm just like, uh, oops, so I'm putting it right here. Okay. The end of that right here. So I'm just like putting a really, really quick gesture here. And then for the neck, I'm just gonna be making it even smaller, okay? So it's farther at the back right there. Okay, kind of like that. Mm, all right. Any of you guys have any ideas about this? I mean, I mean, you wanna say something about this? I do have two other quick things I think I wanna share before we end today. Yep. Yeah, but okay. Oh, I mean, yeah, I need to draw it. Sure. Yeah. There. Okay. So we got that one. Uh, oh, we are almost done today. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I do have this image right here really quickly. So I'm just going to draw it you know, very soon. So I'm just going to close this one. Um, wait. Close this one. I see the, the idea of scale and the depth, right? I'm just gonna be pushing it like really, really quickly. Right here. Mm -hmm. You see the see the bounding box right there, see almost like there. And this less this leg, right? It's coming out way too, way too much into the space right here. I'm just gonna be doing this. Okay. And see that leg right there is just like pushing way back. And look at the size of that feet versus um, that foot versus the size of this foot right here. Just kind of putting that, that feet in there. And look at the size of the head, okay, like that. All right, um, I'm just gonna pass it over to Mike. Hope you enjoyed um, this part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Martin J. Very welcome. Um, stop share. There we go. Okay, two other quick notes I just want to bring up um, that none of us discussed. Uh, first one is what I call push pins. So push pins are these places where, you know, I literally think of it as like a push pin that goes into a cork board, right? It's like a pin. Uh, and push pins are really clearly where we have moments that connect to each other. So if you look at the photograph, for instance. 
um, grab a red here. So we'll take this fuchsia. Um, <clears throat> so where would that be? Well, right there, very important moment, right? That's a great measuring moment, right? I wanna know that his arm touches his rib cage there. And I also wanna know it touches there. I also want to know that the back of his neck touches there on his shoulder. I want to know that the, le the um, edge of his leg touches there on the hip. I want to know that his calf touches right there. You see? So those are what I call push pins. Like when I'm drawing, I, I literally am on brain think, boom, put a pin in that. That location, those coordinates can't move. Unless, of course, I'm exaggerating or whatever. But I want to get the accuracy. I have to put a pin in that so they don't slide around, right? Those coordinates are tight. And I guess to kind of blow everyone's mind here at the very, very end of this whole thing, I've been talking about the two-dimensionality of, um, of these images, right? Uh, because of the bounding box. But imagine if you, um, if you did this instead, right? So let's just say this is the bounding box of this image, right? It looks like this. I could suddenly say, well, you know, let me back up. What Mutunje did was he took bounding boxes within, all right, and you make them smaller and bigger, especially like he said of the same thing. So we might have like a really big foot and then like a little foot, right? And all of a sudden that gives us more depth or a big hand and a little hand, right? And you could see in this flat puzzle space, we're starting to insinuate with these puzzle pieces that there is depth when there isn't really, of course, because it's still two-dimensional. But what if I did this, right? So here's this box. What if I did this to the box, All right? You can kind of play with this and say, well, that that's like, that's kind of a real mind bender, right? It's like, I, I am gonna now force this foot smaller because I've taken the two-dimensionality of the box and said, I'm going to change it, right? I could even take this box and do what Murtunje did and say, well, what if it gets smaller up there too? You see, that's now me saying that head has gotten smaller. So it's this kind of interesting way to go from two-dimensional to three-dimensional, which by the way, again, is still two-dimensional because these are just lines on the two-dimensional surface, right? But being aware of taking something that's got 90 degree angles and by changing angles, you start to insinuate something called perspective, which doesn't really exist, right? And trying to make sense of like what's going on here with scale you know so Matunje's point you know be aware of the scale of similar objects to one another and how they work be aware of the bounding box right we covered the bounding box today from the bounding box we went over to um to what's finally covered right with the envelope and then positive and negative shapes all amazing tools and then finally i can create depth out of this right and last but not least here at the end um keep in mind the push pins you know I put, uh, that's a tool i use all the time okay so with that we're going to close up um thank you everyone for coming today i hope that you learned something that will inspire you to get a little more accuracy in your force drawings you can even start in this place and then do your force drawings in the box and see if you can kind of nail down the proportion while you're still drawing forcefully okay and we will see you uh next friday uh take care and thanks again swami mutunjay as always take care guys, guys. all right we'll see you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.